Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Culture Cafe. I'm Xiao. And I'm Mikhail. Yeah. And we're back. <laughs> yes, very. I'm very happy you know present you this episode as actually is that a first one of the year? Yeah, yeah it's the first this one is of this the year. first one we did for the year. Yeah. So this year I will, will touch on more like interesting topics. So hopefully bring you more knowledge and uh, some insights about the Chongqing this place. Yeah, and don't forget if there's anything in particular that you'd like for us to. Delve into, or talk、mm-hmm. about, or discover. Just let us know down in the comments below, or send us a direct message on any of the social media platforms that we're on. Yeah.、Um, well, because we we read everything, and we try to 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 shape our content based on what it is you guys want to know, learn more about, know and learn more about. Yeah, about the city, or as well as about China、yeah. in general. Yes.、Yeah, so let us know. And so this time, this、uh, this episode, we're gonna talk about an interesting topic. Actually, it's kind of very unique to Chongqing. Yeah, I think, I think it's unique so, to、yeah. to Chongqing. It's these、um, air raid shelters, like bomb shelters yeah, in Chongqing. Yeah, these kind of remnants from the Second World War, in particular, these air raid shelters that were used for people to sort of defend themselves and yeah, take cover、um, when the city was. Heavily hit by by air raids during the World War Two during the Second World War. Yes,、yeah. yes, and、uh, but you know, like in Chongqing, there are many of these like air raid shelters.、Yes. A lot, really. Like、uh, you, if you go to like rather like the downtown or like old town area,、uh, m- along the mountain hill、mm. sides, and you can find them. Like, well, it's a kind of a very special. About it, and there around China, there are many reports. Even like some foreign visitors to Chongqing found that out and write articles on these、yeah. bomb shelters, right? Like, it's、um, interesting. One way is I think the many themes right fit it very interesting topic. One is okay, it helped、uh, like people, it saved people's lives, right? In old times, still in like the Second World War. Yeah, it's a place of refuge. Like, refuge. You knew something was coming. That's、yeah. where you would head. And the second is also because Chongqing's、um, this kind of a、uh, geo. Geographic like location、yeah. and these features, it's actually、uh, built these、uh, bomb shelters. At that time, is really one of the best way out to defend. It also、themselves. makes sense, like you said, because of the ge- because of the geography of the city, because there are so、mm-hmm. many hills and mountains,、yes. it gives you a very safe place to just sort of drill straight in. Yeah, and then you have great cover, like a great natural source of cover. That's true. So that's that's what happened during World War Two. Actually,、yeah. they found this、uh, feature of this land and uh, uh, did. Um, Make them dig out these、uh, bomb shelters and get people's lives saved. Yeah, that's one. Thing. And another is like,、um, well, f- after so many years, you know, these、uh, air raid、uh, shelters. After so many years, and、uh, it did not disappear actually.、Yeah. And、um, you may think maybe it started to disappear from. It already started to disappear from people's like sight. Like this is just something that people don't really talk about or use anymore. Like we have for some time, yes, shelters、yeah. and bunkers and like wartime remnants in Denmark all okay, along the,、yeah. the western coast, for example. And they just sit there and they're not being used. Like they're just left on the beaches. And if you're lucky, you can find one and you can sort of walk into and explore okay, a little bit. Okay, but, but it's there. I mean, like it's di- I kind、there. of disappear so, from people's、yeah. like g- general life yeah, now, right? Yeah, because these ones are just being eroded. They're covered with sand. Yeah, and, and it's not ha- really being used. So that kind of situation also happened to Chongqing, like for for many years,、mm. right? Like these bomb shelters just、mm, not in people's usually daily life, right? But what's interesting, you know, make it is about. What the bomb shelters now? What they are now served as in Chongqing? Yeah, so so the bomb shelters are no longer just sitting inactive. They're actually being、mm-hmm. used for many different things. Sometimes just to relax and get away from the heat. Chongqing is famous for really hot summers. Yeah, that's true. So sometimes in neighborhood, and if there are like the residential area is close to the mountain、yeah. area, and they can find like some bomb shelters like they already left over there in that place. And sometimes they will during summer time. Sometimes they will open, and the,、yeah. the residents can get in just cool, chill. That is yeah, happened in many years ago like that. That is the main usage I think for for for. Uh, Probably for a long time. For a long yeah. time, yeah. Just like as a place to stay cool, stay. And it makes、yeah. sense because not only are you are you sitting someplace cool, but it's it also became sort of a meeting spot, didn't it? 
So it's not you just have about, a happy day. Like, yeah. I, I feel like the Chinese people are really good at not spending so much time just sitting at home. Mm -hmm. They find a reason to go outside, and even if it's just to sit down somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But now, if you go to these air raid shelters, which are nice and cool in summer, but you can meet and you can play cards, you can hang out. The kids will run along and play. Um, I think just like how the the Chinese. Older people are, are dancing out in the square in like, the <laughs> evening. Like they find a reason to be outside, whereas the, most we, of the most like, of the older people that I know back in Denmark, they're just sitting in their apartments. Uh, it's kind of fine. Also, in Chongqing, like for these uh, maybe elderly people or even young people, like at the older times, mm. uh, they find a spot to meet up and uh, yeah. to talk and to come to pass time and see. Yeah. So bomb shelter for for some time for a while was served as that uh, purpose yeah, it's like mainly. A community center, yeah. <laughs> kind of. So then, but. When you look at these places now, you know, like, well, because I got to ask you how, when you came to Chongqing, I mean, like these years, when did you start to pay attention to these bomb shelters? When? I think it, it's it not like it there was a public center. I, I remember okay. always walking down the streets and seeing those green signs that says emergency shelter this way. Okay. Or emergency shelter. So I knew they were here. But sometimes an emergency shelter is just like an open square or mm -hmm. it's a place where a helicopter can land. But then you started seeing, especially when you're walking on the sidewalk next to like a hill, mm -hmm. you could see these doorways and these entrances. Oh, yeah, you can see some, but it's usually it's open. It's not open, I yeah, see. Yeah, many of them are open. closed. Yeah. So I just assumed that, I don't know, it was a parking garage or, or oh, whatever. Okay. So, but I think until recently, there are many innovations like renovations go into these uh, yeah, yeah. bomb shelters and make it the topic of our of us today in this episode, like this. These bomb shelters really have been developed into various occasions, like environment. Yeah. If, if anything that you could sort of find outside, we're talking bars, restaurants, oh, cafes, yeah. <laughs> shops, anything that you could build something out of and make use of, you could turn a bomb shelter into it because it's just open space that wasn't being and used. And it's also deep. And for example, yeah. for example, like you see the wine storage place, right? Yes. Some some wine is storage in these bomb shelters, and and also these owners will develop that place. They store wine there, then they open a wine tasting yeah. place in this bomb shelter. They decorate it into their uh, maybe specific style, mm. more attractive, and there's wine storage in our, indoors because it's cold and dry inside. Yeah. yeah. So so optimal locations for a lot of different storage needs because it's like you said it's cool and it's dry and it, it doesn't matter if it's raining outside or what the weather is mm -hmm. the temperature stays relatively um, yeah, very much the same inside and also cooperate for like the yeah. some of the wine storage there so people take a very good advantage of it yeah. Yeah, so that is at the beginning I saw most, actually as a local here, that is at the beginning I saw like the uh, bump shelters were developed into like wine storage mm. most of the time, right? And then there's like wine tasting place, hold activities there, it's quite cool. And then gradually there are also more use, right? Like some hot pot, you know, like a hot pot restaurant. I've, I've <laughs> seen hot pot restaurants before I've actually mm -hmm. been to a hot pot restaurant, so I've okay. seen a bomb shelter, and I okay. didn't know it yeah. when I was it visiting. It was there time. for a long time, but because there are some restaurant, well, like hot pot restaurant, like time owner test pot re yeah. re uh, uh, brand of hot pot was like uh, using their bomb shelter for a long time. Just sometimes people may not aware what is a bomb shelter before. Yeah, because you just walk in and, and it's decorated just like any other yeah. store or house or restaurant. But then you see these doors in the back that lead into like uh, you go further. Places, yeah, then yeah. you found out that it's more really like for. Yeah, let's, like I said, one storage gradually it's become popular. But yeah. for restaurants, I think it's already started for a long time. And, uh, you know, like uh, uh, for the restaurant, you were in one, right, Mikhail? Yes. Yeah, I've, 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 we were in one recently, actually, uh, just a couple of days ago, where we filmed uh, a live stream from. Uh, which, for some reason, that restaurant is, is really famous. <laughs> it's very, uh, very, maybe we can show our audience about that, some footage like yeah. to see what Mikhail uh, has already visited that place look like. Yeah. Chongqing is a hilly city. Uh, because of the unusual structure, we have, uh, this, we have these bomb shooters that were used as refugees from the wartime. Uh, nowadays, these bomb shooters were used as restaurants, wine centers, uh, um, for war warehouses for delivery companies and uh, even some boutiques. So let's get in one of them and to explore. Um, here I'm in the Yuzhong district. Um, this is where the Zeng Lao Yao Yuzhong is located. Um, 
this is a restaurant uh, re reconstructed from a bomb shelter. And every year in China, uh, there are countless visitors who would love to come here and enjoy food here. Here we have another example for a bomb shelter that has been repurposed. This time it has become a very trendy bar called Caver, a very super name. Um, Caver is also home to a craft beer brewery. So it has become a very trendy spot in the downtown Chongqing. So these are just two examples of, of many of the different kinds of bomb shelters that are here in Chongqing. So the first one was a restaurant that serves uh, some very famous fish dishes and the other one was a place that has turned into this really trendy bar place. Mm -hmm. um, and just to, to go back to the one that I visited that I didn't even know was a bomb shelter at first, the reason I found out is because we asked, we saw this door mm -hmm. in the back of the restaurant that had like a gate in front of it. And we were like, can we go in there? And the owner was like, yeah, yeah, just go in. No. And there was just this long room that had some storage on one side. They were growing some vegetables inside as well. Really? Like some, some uh, mushrooms or something that they use in, in, as one of the actual dishes. So they just had like a local supply of stuff and then they had some storage. And then when we got further in, they were like, oh, okay, maybe, maybe don't go all the way in because we never use that space down there. We don't know what's in there. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I see. I see. That is kind of like a... Venture, I think. Yeah, it, it, like we, we talked about whether or not we should just like fix little uh, lights to our cameras and then just like keep walking. Uh, try. That can be a quite nice like out, out result, you know, like the yeah. uh, output. Oh, that yeah, could be not following. sure what we would find down at the end of that, but you know. Uh, that you can know, be interesting, know. really, like uh, it's just challenge. Nice challenge uh, episode. Yeah. So, Mikhail, like in the first place, like in the, uh, the fish restaurants, mm. I know like because our colleague Aiko was also doing a live streaming she that day that. there, right? Because like she, she like there, um, well, let's say uh, in a very popular like a star, let's say a Chinese star, like born and raised up in Chongqing, mm. that he's very popular singer and actor and uh, got a lot of fans and even overseas. So. Actually, where and recently his episode like a uh, Marvelous City, a, a city documentary. Actually, he visited Chongqing mm. and Chong, it put Chongqing in a very hot topic, yeah. even like in China and also even like uh, abroad, like that. So we are there are many of his fans, uh, our followers as yeah. well. So Aiko was just take this uh, opportunity, also just feel quite pleasure and to show this uh, his fans like how the places he visited in that documentary in Chongqing really look like. So yes. one of the places Aiko visited is that like a bomb shelter fish. So you see, like if they put the bomb shelter, uh, this topic in uh, some kind of like city promotion. Mm. Documentaries. So that means this place is really like worthwhile to worth to checking out. Yeah, uh, Echo's live stream was literally about following in the footsteps of some of the places that this celebrity mm -hmm. has has visited, and it's fun because one of the things I really like about that documentary and the places he's been to is that not all of these places were like high end shops. They weren't okay, all big yes. international brands. They were yeah. local places. He actually in the documentary he visited rather like more story places, yeah. you know, has long history places. He does not choose actually this kind of already online celebrity yeah. uh, places uh, to go. He I'd rather choose like some places with old Chongqing memories. Yeah. Like Bomb Shelter is one of it. And also some other like some art artistic street yeah. like that. So these places are or it's not new actually. They are just carrying like the ages m memories of the cities for yeah. For, many for of these places are old and years, have been there for really. for years, decades even. But it was just as a foreigner myself, mm -hmm. I have to rely on stuff like this to mm -hmm. find these hidden places because I walk past all of these gems all the okay, time and yeah. I don't realize because nobody points them out to me because when you go on websites to search for what to do in Chongqing, where to go and eat. You all you usually find these high-end stuff. Yeah, high, if high you want, things, If you want yeah. something that is local and authentic and really good and has a lot of history, you, you, you just need locals' help. Like, you need someone who knows the city a lot better than you do to sort of show you these places. Yeah, so like us, if we show you these shelters, like you can visit like in Chongqing various usage, I think yeah. it can be an interesting places for you to check out. It's something unique that during your trip, your trip yeah. memories, really, like, I don't, I don't think you can find such kind of a uh, thing like really in other cities or abroad that much. So I think that's what Chongqing have. Like yeah, unique something very and, unique about how this city makes use of its landscapes and its landscape, history. And yeah, all and also through these 
places you touch the history yeah. long ago, right? Absolutely. Just think about it. You touch these bomb shelters like long, long ago. It pro it was really acted as a life saving yeah. saver for for many people. You can I believe that you can feel the energy maybe like mm. inside these bomb shelters. So yeah. So even though they've been redecorated, they might look mm -hmm. different. I still I still think that when you walk into them, I still I think you can still sort of get a feeling of why they were here and what they're being used for. Yeah. And what it was like having to go into them under such dire circumstances. So yeah, I think that's it. That's the thing like you people are looking for mm. actually during their travel, right? Yeah. Some special energy, special things that can reach their last like memories. Yeah. Like that. Something unique. Yeah. So that's about wraps it up of our little episode about Chongqing's air raid and bomb shelters and why there are so many of them and what they're being used for today because they're not just going to waste, they are actually being used. Being here and now I think more and more will be more surprised, more and more renovations will yeah. come out and surprise us to become part of, let the old memory become the new, new experience yes. again. Yeah. Exactly. So we're wrapping up our first uh, Culture Cafe episode for this year and uh, you hope you enjoyed it. As always, let us know if you like this video down in the comments, give us a like and a subscribe. If you like it, share it with your friends, that also helps. And uh, I guess we will see you in the next one. See you. Bye-bye.